Okay, this one is a little bit more of a personal story. So this is a picture from my, my prom promposal. So I actually proposed to this girl if she wanted to go to prom with me. And she said, and so I and I didn't just ask her, like I had, I had my, I got my soccer team to come. Some they carried me in. You can see the balloons. You can see my boy Jason there with the um with the guitar. He was playing the guitar. Like I had the whole team there. And she said yes. And then she said no. So she said yes because everyone was there and all that kind of stuff. But then, like, I think maybe like an hour later, she texted me saying, Hey, sorry, blah, 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 not interested. And I was, you know, like you can imagine like doing all this work to just get just to get rejected, you know. But that's okay, right? You bounce back, you learn from the thing. But and you know, that didn't stop me. You know, I was still able to go to prom with a really nice girl called Emily. And you know, I still had a great time. You know, I had a great time at prom, had a lot of really great friends, all because I was willing to take risks and I didn't let failure hold me back. So today I'm going to be talking at, about Tommy Wood's high school journey. So the picture on the left is my grade eight graduation, going from middle school to high school. The picture on the right is my high school graduation, going from high school to university. And okay, so as like you can see in that picture there, the flowers have changed. The flowers are the same, but I've changed a lot in those in those couple of years. So I think maybe to start making things a little bit fun, I wanted to talk about back in 2010. So what was life like? What was the world like? Like what, what was the world like when I was in grade nine, when I was entering high school? For those of you who watch soccer, this was Arsenal's um, starting team. Woohoo, Arsenal. <laughs> okay, so we have an Arsenal fan in the building, nice. So, um, and then that, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. He um, he won the NBA Finals back in back in uh, 2010. For those of you who listen to music, Drake. This is when Drake released "Thank Me Later," and that is what the iPhone was at the time. So back in 2010, that was the most recent iPhone. Fast forward four years later, in 2014, that is what the Arsenal team looked like. Jerseys have changed a little bit. The roster is almost completely changed. Um, the Spurs, they won their, they won their championship. So if you can, you can see that's a, that's a young Kawhi Leonard on the left. Drake released nothing was the same. And actually it's funny. Cause like when I was finding these pictures, like no, thank me later, nothing was the same. I distinctly remember listening to like Tuscan leather and miss me at those respective times. So I distinctly remember listening to the Drake, nothing was the same album in my grade 12 year. And that was the current iPhone at the time. Okay, so what does this have to do with anything? Why am I starting with pictures of Drake and all that kind of stuff? So all of these are actually super important because it really highlights the point that I'm about to make next, which is next, which is that in between 2014 and now when I'm in 2021, even though I, you know, even though I was only in school like four years ago or six years ago or high school six years ago, I feel like the world has changed a lot in that time. Um, and what I mean by that is that I feel like education has, has gone from being what I, I call the spoon feeding model to what I call the hunter and gatherer model. And so what this means really is that when I was in high school, you know, to an extent, it was very much expected that the, the job of high school is to spoon feed you information. So spoon feeding means you have a parent and a baby and the parent gives. So then we have a parent and a baby, you have a guidance counselor, you have a teacher, you have, you know, you have people that are basically spoon feeding you. Okay, do this, then take this, then take this. And first of all, you know exactly the steps you need to take. And you know, there's a, there's a well-defined start and stop. But in the last six years, you know, I work a lot with students through my startup Attila, which I can talk more about later on. I've, I've worked with a lot of high school students. My, my interns are, I guess, Gen Zs. I'm like a millennial. So I learned a lot from them and I, and I see what kind of things they were doing when they were in high school. And I realized now the people that get ahead, they have what I call a hunter-gatherer mindset. Hunter-gatherer mindset basically means they just go out and they hunt for themselves. They're not waiting for someone else to spoon feed them the information. Hunter-gatherer mindset means that if there's something that you want out there, you don't go and say, mom, how do I do this? Dad, how do I do this? Teacher, how do I do this? You go on the internet and you figure it out yourself. It also means that there's no well-defined start and stop, right? So I think high school, you know, there's like, you know, you grade nine, then you have academic, then you have applied, then you go grade 11, then grade 12. And it's like, you only do things when teachers tell you to do it. Okay, this is an exam, go study for it. If you get a 95%, good. If you get a 65, not so good. If you fail, bad, you know? where there's a well defined this and then you, so you know okay so i have i have four classes this semester i'm going to study one hour for each class then i'm going to do lunch break for an hour then i study for, you know so very well defined you know just the same way when you're spoon feeding someone you have a jar of baby food they finish the baby food good job 
in the real world, just like a hunter, where a hunter, maybe today they kill a rabbit, maybe tomorrow they get a deer. You don't know what the opportunities are going to be. Like, you know, again, I'm only six years old, right? But even when I, I remember when I was in 20, 2010, when I entered high school, influencer wasn't a thing. You know, um, I think, you know, I was talking about video games, right? You know, now people say don't play video games, but Twitch streamers make a lot of money on, on that kind of stuff, right? Even programming, right? There's like, like React. React is a huge, is a coding framework. A lot, very well paid job for React software engineers. When I was in grade 10, when I was in grade nine, even when I was in grade 12, I don't really think React existed, right? So what I'm trying to say is that the world changes a lot. So, you know, maybe like in the model where, okay, do this one thing, you really have to adopt the mindset of being open to all these different opportunities. I think Chinima was talking earlier on about the internet. I think search is your best friend. Um, you really want to, you really want to get into the mindset of whenever you have a question that you want to ask someone, just ask yourself, I could just type this into Google, right? So everything you want to know is on Google. I always tell my, I always tell people that I teach, I'm like, Google is your best friend. Now I've basically abstracted that out to say search is your best friend, right? So learn how to search every single thing you want to know is on the internet. You have to get, have a self-reliant attitude that just go out there and find it. I've linked here. So another example, Reddit and Discord. So Reddit was kind of already around when I was in high school. So if you have information about high school, university, Reddit is probably one of the best places to get information because it's it, what I, what I like about the internet, what the internet does is that it scales out human interaction, right? So like for most parents, when they have a question about IB versus AP, what do they do? They go talk to maybe their friend or their, their coworker or someone in a WhatsApp group about, oh, I, I know your son was in AP. What was that like? I know your son was in IB. What was that like? Right. But then what happens when you don't know people that are in AB, PP? What happens if you don't know people that are in I, I, IB? You know, for immigrants like us, we're, we're sort of limited to our network of people that we know personally. Um, what happens when there's an opportunity that you're interested in, but nobody knows that, but no one knows that program, right? Like a lot of people, they send their kids to schools based on, or they pick school based on who they know that went to that school. Right. So a lot of, you know, for example, like a lot of Nigerians, you know, they'll say, you know, York, Carlton, McMaster, because other Nigerians went there. But maybe, maybe a better school for you might be Algoma. Maybe a better school for you might be Queens. Maybe a better school for you might be McGill. Right. But the thing is that you don't know those people, so you don't know what it's like. So, you know, you kind of go with who you trust and what you know. But now with the Internet, you can scale out. You can directly reach out to people and find out, learn from their experiences using things like Reddit. Discord is another one. Like I only re recently started like getting onto the Discord Discord wave through my interns in the last like month or two months, right? So what's Discord? It's basically a private chat channel. So this, I always like to say like, the same way like parents use WhatsApp, I think is the way, same way students use Discord. So there's so many there's so many great Discord channels for universities, for high school channels. The best way to probably get onto it is either join a red subreddit, or you find one of these things. Just Google again Discord for university students. And then you can already see like first link is exactly what you would want. So just another example, um, Discord. Oh, and so that's what I'm saying, staying on top of the latest technologies. Discord did not, like when I say Discord did not exist just six years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm young, so it's not even like I'm old per se, you know, I mean, young is relative, old is relative. But remember, even just like six years ago, this stuff didn't exist. So you have to be constantly on the ball about the new technologies and new places to go and get information. Attila blog posts and essays. So. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about here was um, on my website, Atila. So for those of you who don't know, Atila is a website that helps students find and apply to scholarships. So if you're a grade 11, grade 12 student, or you know someone who's a grade 11 and grade 12, definitely recommend them to check out the website um, so they can learn more about that. What I wanted to show you is a blog post. So we have lots of articles on here about different advice. Like for example, like we have we have um, one of the articles. For those of you who, so for example, one of those of you who were, um, I think one of the speakers at the team was talking about getting a job. Maybe you don't get a job at like Superstore because you know a job at Superstore, you're just, you're just trading your time for money, but you're not learning career skills. But you can actually get an internship at like a, re like a real company. Like let's say you wanna be a software engineer when you grow up or you wanna be a designer. You can actually get paid internships in these fields as a high school student. Let's say you wanna to go to health sciences. You can actually get a job at a research lab as a high school student, it's possible. So we have blog posts from students who did that kind of thing and you can read their stories. Same way with essays, right? So let's say you're applying to a scholarship, you're applying for university, you want to know what a good essay looks like. We have lots of different scholarships and essays available for students. So you should check that kind of stuff out as well. Get involved. So on the picture on the right here are some of the different awards that I got in, um, in high school. And I'm actually not putting this up here to humble brag. I'm putting this up here to make a point, which is that in life, people see all the pictures of your successes, but there's really no pictures to, to um, 
there's no pictures that capture failures. Unless you maybe take a screenshot of an email or something, there's really no picture to capture failures or you working hard at something. You know, I was, I remember I used to wake up at 7 a.m. and 6, probably 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning, two soccer practices, soccer practice in the afternoon, go to clubs, drive around, study for exams. Like when I look back on my high school experience, I really think about how hard I used to work. And the thing is, there's no pictures to capture all those moments. There's only these awards. And so I think sometimes in life, again, you only see the pictures, but my main point is just get involved. The other thing I wanted to say is don't let fear hold you back. Like you can see this picture right here on the bottom left. That's a picture of me on the football team. I was a kicker and a wide receiver and a, and a defensive back. If you notice in that picture, I'm very skinny and football is not a, is not a sport for skinny guys, but I didn't let that hold me back. Right. A lot of people used to make fun of me. Right? They used to call me world vision, you know, because like the world vision for a dollar a day, you can feed a starving African child. I used to get that jokes all the time, but you know, I didn't care. I, I love football. I mean, after a while, it's kind of boring because like, they never threw the ball, but you know, I loved football. I love the physical thing. I went for it. These are some clubs I would strongly encourage you to, to look into and for parents to tell your kids about hat club, the knowledge society, top scholar program. Look into these programs, apply, talk to other people who are interested in the program, see what it's all about. Um, I think the biggest thing I, would, I could just see, yeah, there's really not much here to say about from, apart from the fact that get involved. I think another thing that holds a lot of people back is that, you know, don't feel like you, you like, sometimes people feel like they have to do things that they don't want to, but just because it looks like an application, you can find a club that you're generally interested in. You just have to be proactive about it, right? For example, the thing I said about how the world has changed, this hat club is like for high school students. And the thing that these students are doing in high school is just amazing to me, right? Like this was, I think it was founded by high school students, completely run by high school students. Like the things that they do is just amazing. And I can't really, I can't say enough about how impressive and how cool it is for it. But I think the key thing I want to get across here is that by seeing what, by seeing what these people accomplish at such a young age, she lets you know what possibilities are out there. Another thing, another thing I would recommend you do if you go on this hat club is you go on hatclub.com. They have this thing here called, um, I think it's called personal portfolio. Yeah, personal website. Read the tutorial and then go to the bottom and then see what some of these people have done. Just to let you know what is possible. Because I think sometimes your scope of ambition is limited by the people around you. But with the internet, you can see what other things and people are just like you are accomplishing and achieving. And that will help you become more ambitious. I think TKS is another great example of this. When you go on the TKS website and you go to meet our students, and I think um, meet a student it's called, or student showcase, student project, wherever, wherever this stuff is, what is this? Um, this, is another, this is another great example of a website that just basically shows you all the different things that students are doing and really just helps you understand like what is possible. Like look at these people, 15 year old quantum tech developer, right? So this is just one of those ways where you can just learn a lot from people. Top scholar program. So another thing I'm doing in my, um, through Artila is that, again, through the scholarships, we've, we've identified some top students and we've invited them to like a scholarship, um, like a summer program kind of thing, where we basically give them resources, we invite them, to, we introduce them to guest speakers. Look into this program as well, see if this is a good fit for you and then apply for the program, right? Doka, um, DECA, HOSA, all these different clubs. L look into it, see which one's right for you. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it. I think a lot of times too, like, you know, like back to the spoon feeding analogy where, you know, parents can like want to force their kids to do things because it looks good and maybe like, for, they, you know, they think it's for their own interest. Eventually people will burn out when you do things that way. Let your passion pull you towards things. Let curiosity pull you to do the things you actually want to do. DECA and Junior Achievement are some other good clubs to look into as well. So this is a this is like a very tangible action item which everyone here should do, every student here should do, and maybe parents can do this too. Over the summer, you should do an independent research project or an independent side project. Very simple. Pick a topic, any topic, and write a blog post about that topic. And it has to be a topic that you have to research, right? And but the thing is, and for parents, you know, I would say encourage your kids to do this, but make it as such a thing where it's completely directed by them. So you can say, okay, um, like, so for example, I see Jala Davis here. She can do it too, right? So Jala, maybe one of your products for the summer can be pick a topic that you're interested in and write an article about it. And it can be any topic at all, but it has to just be something where you have to research this topic. You have to learn more about it, you know, any topic at all. And so why do you do this? First of all, I think one of the problems I think that affects a lot of people in, university, in um, high school is that they associate um, they associate learning with forced labor. So basically it's like anytime they're doing something productive, it's because they have to do it. 
And because they're always doing something productive that they have to do, they associate learning with um, involuntary work. And then so when they finally have voluntary time, they want to spend all their time just de-stressing, escapism, letting their brain relax, playing video games, watching Netflix, all that kind of stuff. If you, learn, if you let people learn that, if you let people associate learning with fun, leisure, it's voluntary, you're doing it because you want to, not because your mom and dad are forcing you to do it, people will just start learning more naturally anyway, and they'll have more confidence, and that confidence and that eagerness to learn will transfer to school naturally. So again, tangible action item here is think of a project to do over the summer. It can be anything. It just has to be write about a topic that you're interested in, write a blog post about it, share it on the internet. And I would also say, make this thing in a text in a video format. So maybe you write it, but then you also make a video sort of like you can use, maybe you do like a slide and you present it and you record yourself. And that way, you, not only do you develop um, your ability to like, like research and ability to learn, but also the ability to communicate, right? Communicating is an increasingly important skill. And it's one of those soft skills that I was gonna talk about, which is that, you know, schools are increasingly, increasingly looking for well-rounded people. I think sometimes, especially with immigrants, we put a lot of emphasis on numeric grades and quantifying things and things that you can measure. But the people that really stand out in the future is people that are good at soft skills as well. Leadership, collaboration, empathy, right? So we're talking about mental health, you know, like the ability to like understand someone's going through a rough time and being able to like approach them and talk to them about it, right? Not, and it's not enough to just know something, but being able to articulate what you know, being able to get your point across. These are increasingly important skills that we need to make sure we're developing in the, in the next generation and from an early age, right? Like even now when I'm presenting, one thing I'm trying very hard to do is enunciate my words clearly and not talk too fast. And I'm sure some of you already think I talk way too fast. And this is something that I've been working on for a long time, but I should have been even working on this even sooner. You know, I really only started working on my communication abilities, maybe like grade 11, grade 12, but skills like this are things that you should, that should be developed from a young age. So I have here too some examples of what kind of things you can do. Sometimes a lot of people think of, of side projects like coding projects. So this is a coding project, but it doesn't have to be coding. If you're not a coder, that's okay. There's lots of other things you can do. So for example, I did one recently, or maybe it can even be an idea. Maybe your, your child, or maybe you have an idea on something the world should start doing. Write an article about that idea and, what's, and do some research, get some data to back up your point, right? So for example, I, I'm really passionate about education. So I wrote an entire article on education reform and some ideas I have for how we can make the education system better. And, you know, I, I did my research. I even made a YouTube video about it. I put slides. I did all kinds of stuff, you know, I, uh, let's see if I can find it, right? So, you know, I did some research on like, you know, when was the first university founded? When was Harvard founded and all that? You know, I just did a bunch of research on these things. And it was something that I wanted to do. And it was no one forced me to do it. And I just let my curiosity guide me along the process. Reach out to people that you admire. This is, an, this is one of those things that I didn't even realize. Like, it's one of those things that doesn't even enter your mind until you see someone else doing it. And you're like, wait, you can just do that? So for example, when I was in second year, and this is why I think it's super important to be around successful, ambitious, driven people, because again, they, they show you things that you didn't even know were possible. When I was in second year of university, I remember talking, I forget how it came up. And someone just brought up the fact that, oh, they just cold emailed people that they wanted to work for, or they would just email people randomly for a coffee chat. And I was like, wait, so you just email people and you ask if you can talk to them for advice and for internships and stuff like that. And I, and it's so, and again, it's like now to me, it's so obvious because I, spend, I do that a lot now, but at the time I didn't even like, it just didn't even, I didn't even comprehend that that can be done. And I think that is such an underrated, but such an important thing that more people should be doing. Find someone that is doing what you want to do, whether this is a job that you, maybe a future job that you want to have, or maybe they're in a program that you want to apply to, maybe they're already in IB, find them through LinkedIn, find them through Twitter, find them through Instagram, reach out to them and say, hey, I noticed you're doing X, Y, and Z. Can I please reach out to you? You're never too young, you know, like people want me to think, you know, aren't you too young to be on LinkedIn? I don't, I, there's no such thing as too young in my opinion, right? As long as you're only putting out things, you know, as long as you're being mindful of your privacy and your, you know, all that kind of stuff, you're never too young, right? All you need to put out maybe is a picture, your name and what school you go to, you know, or you don't put that out, whatever, it's up to you. But the point is reach out to people. Um, so let me, I'm gonna show, and also another thing too, people love to help students, right? Like, you know, you notice a lot of people, what they love to do, they love to play the student, the age card, you know, 15 year old quantum developer, because people are gonna be like, what? quantum developer and you're only 15, oh my goodness, sign me up. Let me help you. How can I help you? Right. And, you know, even for me now, you know, I've, I've, I've been trying to play the student grad, student card a bit by saying, oh, I'm a recent grad because I know that people love to help students, right? All the interns on my team, they're all students. And we mentioned that a lot because people love to help students. I love to help students, 
right? Because they're very earnest, they want to learn, and they haven't been like jaded by the real world yet, so which is good. And they have a lot of potential, a lot of promise. You know, I love, I love Gen Zs. So my point is, take advantage of the fact that you're a student and the people that you reach out to will be very willing to help you out. So let me show you what this would look like. You would log on to LinkedIn. So let's pretend, um, let's pretend I'm Jolly right? So Jolly I think Jolly says she wants to be a doctor, if I'm not mistaken. Or Jolly what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a pediatrician. Awesome. So you want to be a pediatrician. So probably you want to go to a really good, or you want to go to a probably a really good um, pre-med school, right? McMaster Health Science, I think, is the best pre-med school in Canada, or one of the best. So what you can just do is you just Google McMaster. Let's see if I can find it. Google, Mc, or you know, you can even do that. You can do this. You Google the school that you want to go to. So McMaster Health Science. Let's see if I can find it. Or you just Google McMaster University like this. Alumni. Oh, whoops, my bad. Oh, here we go. So you Google a health science student, and then you can now filter by schools. So you can say here, whoops. So health science student, people. Then you go to um, all filters. That's out of school, McMaster. And there, just like that, you can now find all these different health, McMaster health science students, right? And then now, and then what you just do, you connect with them, you say, hey, my name is Jolly Day. I'm super interested in becoming, I want to become a pediatrician in the future. Um, would you be willing to spend 15 to 30 minutes talking to me to give me some advice on how you be, how you got into McMaster Health Science? You can do the same thing with medical school, right? You just Google MD student, University of Toronto and say, hey, I, saw, I noticed that you're a pediatrician. You can even do that for pediatricians. You know, start with, I would recommend starting with young people, right? Pediatrician at St. Joseph's Hospital, pass, da, 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 all these people. And you say, hey, I noticed that you're a pediatrician at this school. My name is Jalade. My name is Bob. My name is Sally. My name is Funke. My name is Tunde. I was. I would like to become a pediatrician in the future. Do you mind giving me fifteen to thirty minutes so I can ask you some questions? How did you do it? Okay, I have two more minutes, so I'm going to go fast. Wait, how do I have two minutes? One second. I thought I had twenty minutes. The other thing I wanted to say is apply for scholarships. Um, yeah, this one is pretty self-explanatory. I think this one is more so directed at grade 11 and grade 12 students, but I'll just encourage you all to apply for scholarships. Um, even if, you know, even if you're just in grade nine or grade 10, it's just a great way to get some money for just like writing about what you've done and all that kind of stuff. You know, of course I'm biased. I think Atila is the best one, but I also reckon, you know, you should use all the sites. You know, I just want you to get as much money as possible. Student awards, scholar tree, scholarships, Canada, use all these different resources you have to get the money you need for school. Okay, this one is a little bit more of a personal story and it's i call it take risks and try things you know i think that you know this one is kind of like you know this one it might be a bit more maybe like controversial advice but i think that you know like one of the things i think about my high school experience is i, I think i kind of i wish i took more risks like maybe if i liked someone i just tell them you know i wish you know just like i just think what i'm just saying is that if you want to make friends or you like someone you tell them you like them if you want to make friends with someone hey i saw you i thought you're doing super cool thing mind if we hang out together uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, so this is a picture from my, my prom promposal. So I actually proposed to this girl if she wanted to go to prom with me. And she said, and so I, I, I didn't just ask her, like I had, I had my, I got my soccer team to come. Someone, they carried me in. You can see the balloons. You can see my boy Jason there with the, um, with the guitar. He was playing the guitar. Like I had the whole team there. And she said, yes. And then she said, no. So she said yes, because everyone was there and all that kind of stuff. But then like, I think maybe like an hour later, she texted me saying, hey, sorry, blah, 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 not interested. And I was, you know, like you can imagine like doing all this work to just get, just to get rejected, you know, but that's okay, right? You bounce back, you learn from the thing. But, and, you know, that didn't stop me, you know, I was still able to go to prom with a really nice girl called Emily. And, you know, I still had a great time, you know, I had a great time at prom, had a lot of really great friends, all because I was willing to take risks and I didn't let failure hold me back. 
And also, I think I was really fortunate too because my parents were not the kind of parents that they don't really, you know, they, they motivated, pushed me, they motivated me, but like they didn't like, when I try something that doesn't work out, they're not too hard on me. So that basically created an environment where I could take more risks. And I would encourage parents to let their kids do the same. And in conclusion, I would say work hard and have fun. I think looking back on my high school experience, I was, I actually had a very happy, pleasant high school experience. I think the reason for this is that I worked very, very hard and I grinded, but A, it was because I was doing things that I wanted to do and I was motivated towards a goal. But more importantly, I was one of those work hard, play hard kind of people, right? So I was always relaxed. I had fun. I took, I tried stuff. Some stuff didn't work. Some things did work. Like a lot of my, one of the things I can talk about, I could talk about the fact that, you know, I applied to be a valid um, a prefect. You know, I had submitted my application late. I, 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 was, I shouldn't have done this, but I wasn't, I wasn't thinking at the time. I submitted it late to one person. They said, no, I went to somebody else behind their back. And I, in my head, I wasn't thinking behind my back. I was just thinking, well, okay, if you want to, I'll just give it to somebody else. And then, um, um, yeah, I got in trouble for that, basically. You know, I got in trouble for that. Um, and that was actually really devastating, you know, now that I think about it. But, you know, it was all good because I ended up working on the end. And then, you know, first of all, I used that as a chip on my shoulder to motivate me to kind of be like, now I can tell this story, like, in the future, hopefully, if I'm more and more successful, I can be like, remember that time where you didn't let me become a prefect? Look at me now, you know? So that can be motivation, too. So work hard, take risks, have fun, joke around, you know, and don't be stressed out, you know, just have fun and enjoy it. And that's my presentation. Happy to answer questions. I'd be happy to answer the questions. So let me go through them from the top again. Um, so the first one is, can grade 12 still apply to scholarships on Attila? Yes, they can. So Attila is available to grade 12 students. How do you get to the point where you're able to deal with rejection? Not that younger kids feel bad when their friends don't want to play with them. Um, so I think, so dealing with rejection is actually a very good question. And honestly, I think the best way of dealing with, reject, with rejection and failure in general is just to get, to just to fail a lot actually. And not to deliberately fail a lot, but it's like, a, it's like, I think failure is one of those things that you can only get better at through practice. And one way I tell people to do this is, is to, is to, is to fail with small things. And when I say fail with small things, I don't mean, I don't mean go out of your way to deliberately fail, but it's like you, you put yourself in situations where you're sort of, I always, I always like to say like, so actually what, what my advice actually is, is that the reason why maybe we're, 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 um, we're afraid of failure is because of embarrassment or like, it feels like, like, it's like, it's like saying you're not worthy. And I think one of the ways to get over your fear of embarrassment is putting yourself in embarrassing situations or in situations where you can potentially get embarrassed, but in a small way. So what I mean by that is like, maybe you're at work or in a meeting or you're at school, you raise your hand up and you just ask a question or they say, does anyone want to come up and maybe do a dance and you just do the dance in front of the class or say, oh, let's do karaoke. Okay, I'll do karaoke, right? Because you're embarrassing, you're not embarrassing yourself, but you're putting in a position where you're like, oh, am I kind of, I'm looking bad. But then once you just get over that social fear, that's usually what's holding a lot of people back. And same thing with, you know, even like when you feel like it's invalidating, you just try a bunch of different things. And the thing is that when you try a bunch of different things, some of them you fail, some of them you succeed at, but then you're just doing so many things that you don't have time to think about the failures. Actually, through the work with Attila, I think I've sponsored about, I want to say five scholarships. And I've given out about, let's say, $3,000 to students. So I have a lot of experience with this. And, you know, so what me and my team, when we look at like, so like both in personal experience and like my things in the past. So I'm talking from, so on this topic, I'm very experienced. Women's we'll scholarship applications stand out specifics. So I know that a lot of people, they talk in abstraction, they talk, they use vague words that I'm a very, like one thing about scholarships is you want to talk in specifics and you want to talk about things that you can prove. When you say things like I'm a passionate self-starter motivated, that doesn't mean anything. Cause anybody, anybody can just say on a piece of paper, I'm a self-starter or I'm motivated. Show me, what have you done to prove that you're motivated? So to make your application stand out, every, every time you make a claim, you need to be able to back it up. So when you say that I'm passionate about equality, I'm passionate about inclusion, I'm passionate about diversity, that's just words. Anybody can say that. It's like, what have you done more than the others? Like, what can you do to actually prove that you're self self-starter? So to make an application stand out, you want to have um, like specific examples of I'm, I'm a self-starter or I'm motivated because I've done this, this, and this. Specific examples. If you can give numbers to prove what you've done, that's always great. I also think something that people should do more often is they should put anything you've done that you want to like talk about, put it online in a place that you can hyperlink to. So if I say that I started a charity organization and we raised $5,000 for charity in, in your application, include a link so that person can actually go and look up what that thing you said that you did. So back up everything that you're saying. And I think the final thing would be um, use simple English. 
I think a lot of times when people write applications for things that are formal, they tend, you probably even noticed how I talk, right? I, I talk in a very informal kind of language. And I do that deliberately because when I talk informally, it's easier for you to understand exactly what I'm saying. So when you write a scholarship application, people think they need to use formal language, use proper grammar, use full sentences, use all that kind of use full paragraphs, but use very simple, concise languages so that we know exactly what you mean and remove all the fluff that we can get your point across. So yeah, so I, I have very opinionated a topic. So Something like I say things. I don't say <laughs> no, no, no. But I think I, I think it's important to I think it's important to say. Um, so what I'm about to say, my personal opinion, it may not work for everyone, but I actually think generally French immersion can be not necessary for a lot of people. I think learning a second. I actually think that. So my opinion actually is I think that. Um, and again, this is just me. I think learning a second language, if you already speak English, is not the most efficient use of time, because most of the time you can like. Or let me put it this way: given the choice between spending like maybe 10 hours a day learning a second language versus learning a, a skill like maybe coding or design or becoming better at like communication i think it's almost better to just learn a skill than to spend that time learning a second language thank you very if, much if your goal is to get career opportunities <laughs> i'll be happy to answer the questions so let me go through them from the top again um so the first one is can grade 12 still apply to scholarships on atila yes they can so atila is available to grade 12 students how do you get to the point where you're able to deal with rejection? Not that younger kids feel bad when their friends don't want to play with them. Um, so I think, so dealing with rejection is actually a very good question. And honestly, I think the best way of dealing with reject, with rejection and failure in general is just to get, to just to fail a lot actually. And not to deliberately fail a lot, but it's like, a, it's like I think failure is one of those things that you can only get better at through practice. And one way I tell people to do this is, is to, is to, is to fail with small things. And when I say fail with small things, I don't mean I don't mean go out of your way to deliberately fail, but it's like you you put yourself in situations where you're sort of I was I always like to say like so actually what what my advice actually is is that the reason why maybe we're 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 um, we're afraid of failure is because of embarrassment or like it feels like like it's like it's like saying you're not worthy. And I think one of the ways to get over your fear of embarrassment is putting yourself in embarrassing situations or in situations where you can potentially get embarrassed but in a small way. So what I mean by that is like, maybe you're at work or in a meeting or you're at school, you raise your hand up and you just ask a question or they say, does anyone want to come up and maybe do a dance and you just do the dance in front of the class or say, oh, let's do karaoke. Okay, okay I'll do karaoke, right? Because you're embarrassing, you're not embarrassing yourself, but you're putting in a position where you're like, oh, am I kind of, I'm looking bad. But then once you just get over that social fear, that's usually what's holding a lot of people back. And same thing with, you know, even like when you feel like it's invalidating, you just try a bunch of different things. And the thing is that when you try a bunch of different things, some of them you fail, some of them you succeed at, but then you're just doing so many things that you don't have time to think about the failures. Um, so I didn't go to the IB or the AP program. I think the main reason was because it was in a different school. And like, so basically I'd have to like move out of town to go to the IB program. Let me say one more thing on the IB thing. Um, this one, don't worry, this one is not controversial and it'll be quick. I think if your question is, okay, is IB worth it or not? Basically, what you have to ask yourself is, if you do IB, you're going to be spending, you're going to be spending a lot more time doing schoolwork and extending for exams and all that kind of stuff. And the trade-off is you have less times on side projects, you have less times on clubs and all that kind of stuff. And so we actually have to really find, ask yourself is, is the additional like prestige from doing an IB program actually worth it? Like for me, all the programs that I want, I applied to, I got into without IB. So I think what you probably want to do is maybe talk to people who are in the program and have finished it. And then I guess using like the approach I said on LinkedIn and find out like, was there actually a benefit? Like all the additional time they spent on schoolwork, was it actually worth it in the end? So that's what you have to like find out for yourself.